Hello. This is where we get to talk and debate about all things paranormal, strange, just plain weird. And from time to time, we'll have special guests joining us, those who investigate ghosts and haunted places, hunt Bigfoot, chase UFOs, discover metaphysical mysteries, or uncover the truth surrounding urban legends and myths. I'm Jackie Meter, Director of Central California Paranormal Investigators, and my co-host and partner is sensitive, healer, and Reiki master of Casa del Cudendero, Krista Erickson. Hi, welcome back everyone. As you've noticed, we have a brand new studio set up. We are uh, changing things up a bit. And we got new music, a new intro, new graphics, and of course new stories to talk about. So welcome and thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is really cool. It I is. Mean, I mean, you know, this is uh, this is really nice. So. Yeah. And it may change next month. Who knows? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. It'll be a surprise every time. Yeah. <laughs> just like your hair. It just like my hair. Exactly. <laughs> and notice our cups. Oh, yeah. Um, our you know, cups. yes, yours is what? The Well, I got it from a visit to the De Young Museum in San Francisco. Ah. They did the Treasures of Ancient Egypt. Oh, I just had to. Get I would the cup. be interested. I mean, it was a lot. You know, I always love Egyptology. So yeah, was, and yeah. yours. I of am sons of anarchy that my <laughs> hubby got for uh, uh, Christmas. Christmas, yeah, yeah. This so this is my cup. It's this so sad cup. that show's over. Mm -hmm. So sad. Mm, there's a movie. There's a I movie. I know. But two years, I think two years before it'll it'll come out. Oh. Oh. It's too long to wait. It's mm -hmm. too long. All right. Back on topic. Oh yeah, back Paranormal. on topic. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so your holidays was good. We're good, huh? Yeah, Everything? it was. I had a good time. Good. You? I think we talked about that last time we were. I we may month. have. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be talking. Uh, one of the segments of our new show, new look, new show, is we're going to be talking about California haunts. Mm -hmm. And up first is we're going to be uh, talking about Central California, Coulterville, California. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think and, and some of you know um, we have uh, uh, an expedition every year, and I usually take my former students, uh, and we go one place a year, usually historic. And uh, this year the event was sold out, so and we went up to the Hotel Jeffrey in Coulterville, and let me tell you, we had I had a blast. Uh, I don't think I stopped smiling the whole weekend. It was that much fun. So. You've been there, I know, because yes. you went there the first expedition. We, I went yep. five or six years ago. It was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's got new owners, um, you know, and, and the stuff. Now the the, the evidence is, is just starting to come in. I do have one piece of evidence so far uh, uh, that was captured by John and Montrefredis. Okay. And uh, if, if if everybody remembers, okay. they were here. There are, are Bigfoot Sasquatch hunters, mm -hmm. and they were here a few months ago. But they were there, because they do a little ghost hunting on the side. Right. So they were there, and um, they left the, you'll see the picture up there, the, they left the recorder on the table running, and we were down at the other end. So um, when she listened to it, she sent me this. Burning. Burning, help me. Okay, so can I? Can I? I I'm, I'm pretty sure I shared this with you years ago when I was there. Yeah. But um, the one time I've been in Coulterville, I was actually upstairs in one of the bedrooms that would have been above the saloon. Right. And and we weren't even really. Well, no, you know, I guess we were investigating. There was a few of us in the room, and right. I was sitting on the bed, and all of a sudden, this spirit showed up behind me. Oh, yeah, yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. That uh -huh. Jackie Harris right. was with me. She was. Right. Um, I remember that. Right, and it the spirit that popped up behind me was severely burned. Right, right. So how interesting that now. Well, no, I'm I'm kind of in shock right now. <laughs> well, the his, the histor the history behind it, the the, the town. Pretty much burned down three times. Right. Twenty minutes, right. twenty years apart, and always in the month of July. So, Just so yeah. weird. Yeah. And not the hotel wasn't. I think it was burned down the last time, and it was three years until they rebuilt it. Mm -hmm. But um, they. Uh, so it's got a. It's got a, a definite fire history. Right. And then to 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 not well, it's sad. But to add to that, that after we left, two days after we left, it caught fire again. I know. And it wasn't even July. Right. 
But Man. fortunately, only part, I think it was part of the second or third floor that burned. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't the whole thing, thank God. But yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I mean, there's no still, there's, there's still quite a bit of damage. I mean, it's a historic structure, but, and it's old, and some of the wiring is probably not the best. Right. But, um. Yeah, and wow. no, we did not cause it. You know. <laughs> but four times now then, so four yeah, times yeah, it's well, been on fire. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it would make sense with that kind of history that you get an EVP like that. Yeah, and it sounds like a woman's voice. So, yeah, I would so, agree. Yeah. I would so, agree. But it's just burning, I'm burning, help me, I believe. Yeah. Wow. So, that's amazing. It that's is amazing. Like a catch. She's, that's a good catch. Yeah, she sent it to me, and I just went, "Wow, that's cool." <laughs> I, I caught the "I'm burning, help me," but I wasn't too sure on the first word. But um, it definitely sounds like something burning or whatever. Yeah, but, definitely. But, so. Wow, very cool. Well, if anybody else has finds, we'll keep. Yeah, yeah. Keep I, them. I will. I will post them. Is anybody else? Mm -hmm. And and I can put them on the air. I will do that. So, and right. I, I don't know. They don't always go with all the air stuff. You know, sometimes they're class Bs or Cs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. This was a great one, though. Yeah. Very wow. cool. Anyway. All right, so our next segment, we're going to talk about books, TVs, movies, everything uh, paranormal, really. So we got a good movie coming up. Um, out of Sydney comes the legend of Quarantine Station and the little girl in the pink dress who haunts it. Um, tales of this ghostly apparition have been recounted on blogs, TV shows like Ghost Hunters International, and um, social media posts describing everything from a cold touch to a full-blown vision of a little girl. Um, there are sightings there all the time, and according to the witnesses, um, her ghost appears rather frequently and is quite physical, so like she likes to touch a lot. And uh, a lot of people are actually have actually seen and experienced mm -hmm. the ghostly activities. There's just report after report after report of this. Um, so the question is, why does she allegedly haunt the station? Um, speaking through a spirit medium at one time, the little girl claimed that she was murdered by her doctor, and perhaps she was right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Yeah, this is uh, fascinating. It, it really is. So research into the isolated site tells us that, that this is where migrants suspected of having contagious disease were held during the 1830s all the way up to the 1980s. So this is a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. And apparently euthanasia was quite common when there was an outbreak with, of a disease because you know the doctors they would just they would rather euthanize people to avoid an epidemic right. um, so there actually may be some truth to her story well now we will be able to see her story on the big screen so quarantine station which according to code director bianca biasi the legend of the girl, ghostly girl in the pink dress has always intrigued her um, there was only one concern Miss Biasi was hoping that there would be no ghostly events <laughs> during the on-site launch like there was during the filming. And there was quite a lot from what I understand. There were right. a lot of, I mean, the batteries would go dead, camera lights would be on in indicating they would be working, and uh, they, they would have no film, it would be all black. Right. So, yeah, so right. it was, it Wait, was. And that's a huge problem yeah. when you film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So she uh, she was actually quoted as saying, "This is Miss Piazzi was quoted as saying, um, we were hoping none of the equipment would stop working again, like right. you said." Um, and she also stated that the crew had been plagued by unexplainable um, equipment failures the entire time while we're filming mm -hmm. the um, paranormal hotspot. So let's go ahead and watch the trailer. Okay. I don't want to die. I'm It's okay. Just go to sleep. Why don't we evoke the spirit of the girl in the pink dress? You're on. Silencio. I invoke the girl in the pink dress. I want my mommy and daddy. They're in a better place now. Hello? They're gone. What do you mean they're gone? Zach! Blake! Eva! So I think the curse worked, huh? Zach, I know you're at the quarantine station. I'm coming to get you. You guys are in deep shit. We need to stick together. We have less power over us if we stick together. Bingo, bingo, where's the apocalypse? 
Doesn't that look great? Well, you know, and I'm glad it's not, it doesn't look like a horror movie. It looks more like a paranormal thriller, exactly. which I like. I agree. Just like I, I watched The Haunting uh, of Cell Block 11. But um, it does look interesting. Mm -hmm. It's out of Australia. It's, uh, I guess it has its premiere January 26th there. Right. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it'll go to the movie theaters or if it'll go straight to DVD or what. I don't know. When we so. find out, we'll let everyone yeah. know. But I think it, it looks great. Yeah. I'm really loving yeah. these smaller budget indie yes. films that are being done yeah. with the paranormal. I Honestly, I think they're better than yes. the big Hollywood ones. And I, and I hope we get to f uh, feature more of them. Right. If, you know, anybody out there is doing a little indie, uh, let us know. I mean, we'd be happy to put the trailer up and talk about it, give it a review. Um, you know, I'm pretty easy, you know, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I like highlighting those. Yeah, me too. That, one, that and, one really looks great. Yeah, and I'm not so much, I mean, I like horror, but I, I'm, I'm a lot more into the paranormal thriller. Right. I'm not so much into the, the horror and all the blood and the guts and stuff anymore. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Did that when I was younger. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. Well, right. um, okay, I think um, we're on, oh, we're going to be talking about Hana, TV. Hana Gossip. Hana Gossip. Hana Gossip. Hana Gossip. Ooh, good I need stuff. a drink for this one. Yeah, huh? no kidding, huh? Okay. So this, everyone knows, and we've talked about it briefly a few times before, but there yeah. are just tons of paranormal TV shows out there. <laughs> and I have no problem just coming right out and saying some of them are bad. Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I ran across a review. It's about the paranormal reality TV for 2015, mm -hmm. those that will continue right. and those that will not. And this is reviewed by uh, a gentleman named Rick Hinton uh, out of Greenwood Paranormal Examiner. And um, this is what he has to say. And I have to, pretty, think, I have to say I pretty much agree with him. Yeah, I do um, too. I do too. Paranormal television is such a hot topic. Hot topic. <clears throat> I'm sorry. A hot, I'm sorry, I gotta start that over again. <laughs> Paranormal television is such a hot or miss venture. Hit or miss. Hit, or, yeah, I got hot. <laughs> All right, who, who did this? Okay. You did. I did, yeah. <laughs> Just don't tell anybody. Okay. It's such Our a secret. hit or miss venture, trying to entertain the masses with so much competition out there. On any given night, there is that opportunity to gather information that will make one savvy to the ways of how a paranormal investigation is conducted. That by the end of the week of viewing, you will be guaranteed to be an expert in the field, in the realm of shadows and mysteries. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, back to reality, television after all boils down to ratings. No ratings, no show. It all comes down to how the viewer bonds with those in front of the camera, and at the end of the day, how believable is it? Boy, can I go on. Yeah, no Whoa. kidding, no kidding. Or for that matter, how entertaining. Entertainment may many, may many times win out over believability. Paranormal themed reality shows come and go based on these factors. And it is the viewer that will ultimately determine its success or failure. Here are a few shows that, we, that will return in 2015. This is the Dead Files. Now, right. I know that's really popular right now. Right. This is the, the Dead Files. The Dead Files. I can't even enjoy it because the whole time I'm thinking, come on, you guys, you know? <laughs> you didn't watch Sons of Anarchy? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> I do watch some well, TV. And, you know, and actually, I did watch a couple times, and I did, I did kind of like it when it first started. Um, and you're right, you've got this retired New York policeman and you've got this physical medium, Amy Allen, I don't even know what that means, and, you know, like you said, uh, you know, what does that mean? But well, And I think physical medium is somebody who 
they pick something up, a physical object up, and then they're able to get information from Which that object. Which reminds me of psychometry, but right. anyway. Anyway. You, anyway, apparently the show is you have two different people, two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, the downside is that Alan's over-the-top dramatic facial contortions mm -hmm. during the initial walkthrough <laughs> uh, of a client home often makes this reviewer's head want to explode. Many times, <laughs> putting it mildly, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, many times during the client reveal, Deshavi will shoot Alan a look after her opinion that is just priceless. So if you watch The Dead Files, you know, be on the lookout for that. All in all, it's an entertaining show. Yeah, and I think it is. I think it is entertaining. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I do like the way they, they present it. I mean, it's dramatic. Like right. all the shows and are. I like the, the, the idea behind it. Yeah. You know, when I investigated, yeah. that's how we would investigate. Yeah. We would go through and we would do a psychic walkthrough mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. everyone taking their own individual mm -hmm. notes, and then do an investigation to see. Mm -hmm. So I like that they're incorporating both of that. And um, we do that, too. We right. do that, too. Yeah, so. and I, I think that part, I think that's great. Um, Another one that's going to be returning. Okay. Paranormal Witness. Mm. Now, this one is not one of my favorites. <laughs> the series premiered on September 7, 2011, and Sci-Fi Channel has renewed it for a fourth season in 2015 for a 13-episode run. The show deals with the first-hand accounts of supernatural encounters featuring a cast of relative unknowns. Of interesting note that while an American documentary-style reality show, it is put together by a British production company. Oh, I didn't know that about it, that it was a British production company. But, but it, it has, and, it, and, he, and he writes, it has found its niche in the paranormal community of television viewers, and is currently ranked as sci-fi's number three most watched series. Yeah. So. And you know, in this one, I have seen just a few episodes, not many, but I've seen a couple episodes of this, and it was okay. I'm never impressed. Of course, yeah. we have personal. We have a personal relationship with Paranormal Witness and go, my ghost story. So right. you know, I right. I, I was never. I was came away disappointed each time. So. Yeah. The next one is Ghost of Sodom. Now, this one I haven't seen. The Tennessee Wraith Chasers are recruited for a second season on the job and ready to rumble with ghoulish spirits <laughs> as they explore some of the country's most frightening asylums, sanitariums, and mental hospitals. Mm hmm. hmm. Okay. So again, I love the premise behind it. Yeah. Well, first of all, it, <laughs> wraith chasers. That's an interesting. Tennessee wraith chasers. Tennessee wraith it's chasers. an interesting, it's a tongue twister for me, but. It is. An interesting. It's a very poignant name to give a group, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the idea of, of keeping it to asylum, sanitariums, mental hospitals. I think that really, it narrows it down. You know what to expect. And but that's then, something I've never done. I've never done, a, well, except for the Wolf Banner, but. Right. You know, but that's hospitals, so small. mental institutions. I've never really done any of that. And I would like to do do one of those. I, yeah. ha I have never done one. So that part intrigues me. Yeah. Um, had a short run in Octo to October, but it captured the, na the ratings, right. top ratings for the network. And so it's going to be going back on to th 2015 on the Destination American Channel. And so saddle up and take a ride. Yeah, let's see what, what happens up it. <laughs> now this next one, The Haunting of, is by psychic medium Kim Russo. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, she deals with stories of various celebrities and their paranormal encounters. It has, in effect, replaced the canceled series Celebrity Ghost Stories. Right. Which only just goes to show that celebrities are not immune to unexplainable occurrences that swirl just beneath the surface of our hectic daily lives. <laughs> so this one, you basically, they just put, like it said, they just put a new title on it. Yeah, basically it's you know, the same. I, I, used to, I, watched, same. Um, I used to watch Celebrity Ghost Stories and I, and I liked it, I was, it was okay. It was fun to see that, you know, they had some creepy experiences too. But, you know, this is one of the reasons I don't watch a lot of these shows. It's just a new title yeah. on the same old thing. Yeah. So, I wish some of those celebrities would come on our show. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> hey, <laughs> if you're out there. <laughs> oh, apparently, the show has been shuffled from the biogra Biography Channel mm -hmm. to right. its new home, the Lifetime Movie Network. Shuffling is never a good sign. No, it's not. It's <laughs> most definitely not a good sign. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. You want to take this next one? Sure. We have... Um, one more show that is going to be returning, and this is Expedition Unknown. This is Josh Gates, so he's kind of rising from his ashes of his canceled sci-fi series, which was called Destina Destination Truth. Let's see if I can spit that out. Um, and he's, uh, he's reincarnating into this new venture produced by the Travel Channel. 
And once again, he will be tasked with investigating iconic mysteries as he travels across the globe. So well, that's the same thing he was doing before, only a different, right. different name. Exactly. So again, they're just putting a new name on the same old thing. And a different channel. Right, and a different channel. So, well, I mean, he's good. I he mean, is. I, like people, I, I do, too. I like Josh Hayes. And a lot of people do like him. Yeah. Do like him. Do like what he does. So right. that's a plus. Yeah, that's and, and, you know, and, and the, um, the person that did these reviews even said that he, you know, he has never had a problem with... Um, humorously poking fun at himself, <laughs> even though in the past he's had some bad history with some of his yeah. female cohorts. Yes. So apparently, they left. right, yes. apparently he's a little too rough around the edges maybe, so <laughs> that maybe that's why he's got moved to a new channel with a new name, but who knows. But either way, um, you know, if you've enjoyed his shows in the past, and this is this is great because he's coming back. So, and like yeah. I said, I do I do enjoy watching him. He makes an entertaining show. Yeah, it's not always about ghosts, but right. it will. I think it will be entertaining, and I think that's what what people like about him that it is entertaining. That's why he goes right. And this new series um, will debut on Thursday, or it did debut it, on Thursday, yeah. January eighth, two thousand fifteen, at nine p.m. Um, and uh, the the first episode was all about the disappearance of Amelia Earhart. Right. So again, not totally about ghosts, but about mysteries. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm pleased. Yeah, we'll see what happens in the yeah. future shows. Okay. okay, shows whose future are in question. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> called Amish haunting. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, I you know. Six episodes made the run on the Destination American channel in September and October mm -hmm. last year. Seemingly stable members of the Amish community recounted their personal paranormal encounters mm -hmm. believed by them to be a result of violating their strict religious laws. Okay. So, so they, okay, so let me get this straight. They believe that they're experiencing paranormal activities right. because they haven't been ad adhering to their... That's my take. Lost. I've never seen the show. I don't think I will. I don't think I want to. I could be totally wrong here, but isn't being on film also against their well, yeah, moral law? So wouldn't they, if that, if that's really Anything what they believe is technology? The, right. Yeah. So aren't they perpetuating their own problem based yeah. on their belief they system? They must be getting paid a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's seriously. all I can say. Aye, okay, aye, aye. up is Ghost Stalkers. Now, I did see the very first show of Ghost Stalkers. Ghost Stalkers, and it, okay. And I, I was impressed. It was a little different, and I was impressed. I liked uh, uh, Richard Roundtree. He had some equipment that he was using. I think he had a Vortex application software, which was interesting. I don't know a lot about it, but that was very interesting for Okay, me. I'll have to check that um, out. It, it, it tracks almost energy, tracks like energy. Cool. So Sounds but, interesting. Um, this is also appearing on Destination America, okay. and it uh, deals with paranormal investigators who had went through near-death experiences, and the show featured Chad Lindbergh and John E. L. Tunney. Originally, its time slot was on Sunday night. It was moved to Thursday night midstream. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is never a good sign. Right, so we'll see what happens with that. And this is... The, the Nick Groff, who was on Ghost Adventures, and right. he left. Right. This is one of his productions, and I think this is probably the big one of the big reasons that he left. Right. So he got behind the camera now. Yes. Right. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. So you know, and that's exciting because he has the experience of doing the investigation. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm interested to see what happens with this show. Yeah, and I hope that the network gives him a chance to kind of give him a shot and kind of. Uh, develop this this story this this series a, a little bit longer. Agreed. Give it a chance. Right. Yeah. Give it a chance. Yeah. Okay. Now there are a few shows that um, are dearly departed. They've gone the way of the dodo board bird. <laughs> the way of the dodo bird. <laughs> this one I'm at, this first one I'm sad about. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, fact, this was that. Yeah. Facts are fake. Yeah, Paranormal yeah, files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was with um, Bill Murray. Yes. Who I met through Murphy. one of Murphy. <laughs> Sorry. Who I met at one of your conferences. Yes. And he is a he's great a guy. Good for him and his uh, wife, Anita. Right. Yeah, and friends. really down to earth. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, the thing that I liked about him is that I believe him. Well, and, and you, once you know somebody like Bill, yeah. and you know that he's on a show, you know how credible he is. Exactly. And how exactly. trustworthy. So, you know, he's not going to give you a line of BS. Right. He's, he's just not. He's right. not going to do that, you know. So and, and I'm sad that that they canceled the show because yeah. I actually I really liked it. I'm I'm hoping yeah. that he gets 
a new project. Something I hope else. so. But, but um, you know, he's come up with some pretty good theories, so I'm, I'm hoping he will stay yeah. connected within that. But you know, but they had a good run. His show started back in 2010, um, and they were on for three seasons on Sci-Fi yeah. Channel. It's and actually a good long run. It is. It is. Run. It's a good three seasons. Is good, and it was with um, former FBI um, agent Ben Hansen, and mm -hmm. it, it was just him and a team of critical. Yeah, unfortunately, I guess in their second season they had some audience interaction, participation, and I guess right. I guess it just grew stale. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who was writing who was writing it or anything like that. I don't know. Um, the shows or who the scripts, I don't know who, but apparently it got stale. And yeah. There just there was no new material, I guess. Well, that's too bad. Like I said, I hope that... Um, I mean, how many chupacabras can you well, chase? Well, and that's true. They did chase a lot of chupacabras. <laughs> All right, okay. another one that is gone is Ghost Mine. Um, this oh. was another sci-fi innovation, and... Um, and it was just based off the paranormal horizon that certain minds have the possibility of being I, haunted. I like this show. I did I too. Liked the, I, I like the well. down home. Yeah. Um, I liked I liked the fact that they they were natural. They weren't. It didn't seem like it was scripted as much right. as the other shows. Right. Um, I like the the rural places that they went to and they talked to the local people about the history. Mm -hmm. So I I enjoyed Ghost Minds and I'm sh and I'm sorry and I think. Even Mr. Hinton says um, uh, he, that he pulled he pulled the pl that sci-fi yeah. pulled the plug on this prematurely. prematurely. Should have given it another couple seasons, I think, to really yeah. kind of. He's right on that. Mm -hmm. I think because um, this was only on two seasons. Yeah. And I think yeah. there were shorter seasons too, yeah. weren't they? Like yeah. it, yeah. yeah. So yeah, because the first only had six episodes and the second had twelve. So that's only eighteen episodes yeah. total. I don't think that was long enough. No, it wasn't. It was, it not was to good. build a viewer base, not right, not, nor a fan club or anything like that. It right, just, exactly. Just wasn't, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. okay. We all love our Southern boys. <laughs> yes, we do. Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel featured a Bayou-based team dealing not only with ominous presences but also gators, snakes and thirsty mosquitoes. Well. Duck Dynasty comes with the paranormal <laughs> world. I don't know. <laughs> okay, had <sighs> six episodes starting April 10th and kaput by May 15th. I think that was a good move. Right. Very good move. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah. It, it, apparently, uh, Mr. Hinton says <laughs> it was Duck Dynasty meets the cemetery at the end of the road. <laughs> exactly. Okay? Exactly. Okay. And then Haunted Highway, okay, premiering July 3rd, um, had six episodes featuring Jack Osborne, son of Ozzy, and mm -hmm. team as they, as they what, as they took to America's remote roads in search of hellhounds, skinwalkers, ghosts, <laughs> And restless spirits. Hellhounds, huh? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and, and I've heard of them and I've seen pictures, but it's one of those um, a myth legends. Mm -hmm. So nobody's really had an, a, a, a sighting in right. quite some time. Right. Mm, not like unicorns and chupacabras. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, from, from what I understand, that was the fifth episode that Osborne revealed that he had actually been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Right, right, right. right. So right. he stepped back temporarily from his hosting duties. Um, right. But the team, however, went on and the series was renewed for another six episodes. Um, but a third season seems to have slipped through the cracks. Maybe, apparently, without Jack there, without Jack Osborne, it just wasn't um, Yeah. Just well, wasn't working. many people are still waiting, but yeah, I think we have it on good authority that... Uh, um, it's done. So don't wait anymore. It's, right. It's done. It's over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting that the Sci-Fi Channel seems to have a habit of glutting the market <laughs> with paranormal reality shows. Some just silly and deserving of cancellation. Oh boy. Yeah. Others not given the time to to develop a lawyer viewer viewer base. It's a paranormal frenzy. Too much shoved down a viewer's throat doesn't usually have a happy outcome. The ghost shows in 2015 may very well open some doors, but most likely close others. Yep, I couldn't agree with that statement more. Yeah, and we we've seen <laughs> and we've seen the glut. Yes. I, mean, I think it's slowing down a little bit, but I we have definitely seen the glut. And yeah. and people are more choosy now, and they're nitpicking. And then the more people that learn about the paranormal, about ghost hunting, UFOs, or whatever, they're they're 
they're spotting the BS. Exactly. They're realizing you know? how much of it mm -hmm. is just for the camera. Yeah. You know. Right. Like right. I know we were talking earlier off camera about how it's like, oh, what is this? And then it cuts to commercial. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. I mean, we're tired <laughs> then, of that. And then you wait through three and a half minutes of commercial to come back yeah. and find out it abs it's nothing. It's, it's nothing. nothing. It was nothing yeah. at all. There's just too much being done for the camera, and it's not real investigating and I, anymore. And that has a lot to do with the producers and it the does. network. So, you know, yeah. the stars may not have a say-so, and I understand that. But, uh, you know, you could choose not to belong to that particular network if they're right. going to do that, which, which is... Well, yeah, you know, on, on you know, playing devil's advocate here, it has to be exciting because let's be honest, real ghost hunting, it really <laughs> isn't that exciting, people. Boring, <laughs> it boring. is. It's, it's boring, you know. So yeah. I mean, if they didn't do that, nobody would watch it either because it's boring. Yeah. Unless you're there, a part of it, it is boring oh, to watch. Even then, it's boring. Even it's having, so having to watch through your own <laughs> investigation videos is like a snooze fest. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, I understand why the producers do it, but there's got to be some kind of happy balance around yeah. here that just hasn't yeah. been found yet. But yeah. hopefully somebody will come across it. So. Somebody wants to, wants to cash in. All right. All right. Well, that's it for Let's TV on, shows. Please. Let's move on. Let's yeah. Move on. All right. So I got something that is just plain weird. Just plain weird. <laughs> <laughs> there is a mystery in uh, uh, Ottawa. I think uh, I'm saying no, that right. Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. In Ottawa County, Alabama. So, if you guys remember, on our last episode, we did a whole episode on creepy dolls. Well, these stories they just keep coming in, so we're sharing one more. Um, so, in Alabama, there are 21 porcelain dolls on bamboo stakes that were found last November in the middle of Bear Creek Swamp, and some of them are missing heads because you know. It's not creepy if it doesn't have a head. <laughs> you know? It's not creepy enough. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not creepy enough. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, sheriff deputies traveled by canoe into Bear Creek Swamp on Tuesday to recover the dolls. Um, some of their faces are painted white, and they are all wearing different dresses. Most of them are porcelain and have the appearance of being antique. So these are older dolls. Um, now, Chief Deputy Joe Sedinger said that authorities tried to contact the timber company that owns the land, but of course, no one got back to them. They don't want that <laughs> publicity, I'm sure. Um, but they're thinking it was probably just a Halloween prank. Uh, but the Chief Sedinger didn't give much thought into it until people expressed concern on social media. Hello, Facebook. But, yes, hello. Um, but he stated, quote, I admit it looked kind of creepy. Um, you, you could see them from the road. We figured it was best to get them up. So the Montgomery newspaper reports that it has been a rite of passage for generations of teenagers to enter the area at night looking for creatures said to roam the swamp. Um, so the dolls are being inventoried back at the courthouse. They don't really know if these were kids that were just out, if this was part of the initiation, like maybe somebody set it up and said, oh, there's a haunted place. Well, you know, I've been, I've been there. I've, been, I've actually been to Bear Creek Swamp. We cool. went there because I was <laughs> in Alabama, Prattville, and it's just a little bit outside of uh, Montgomery. Okay. And uh, we were there helping uh, another group shoot a documentary, I think uh, The Haunted Deep South or something okay. like that. But anyway, it, it's... Um, we were there searching for ghost lights. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that was fun. So we were there at midnight, like after wow. after midnight. And um, but then I had went back during the day and actually took some footage, some video footage. So it's about thirty seconds. It's not much. Okay. But go. And, can we show that uh, that little uh, video footage? Now, <laughs> you can hear the mosquitoes. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> it's when, beautiful. Now, when they said that the, the timber company owns the land, mm -hmm. right? Which I didn't know until this came up. What timber? You saw the trees. Yes, they're not very they're big. They're like that big around. <laughs> well, you know, and that could be a spot where the timber company had already come through and replanted. That's true, I guess. So maybe that was replanted. You know, because oh, a lot, about that. a lot of well, you're so damn smart. No. <laughs> <What> the hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that way they can go back in another 10, 15 years and cut them down okay. again, you know, because right. they plant. But anyway, 
You we now where when. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a drink. Of mine. Take a drink. Mm. <laughs> you really when don't know <laughs> what, what is in our cups, do you? <laughs> if only they knew. If only they knew. <laughs> yeah, okay. Kristen needs it. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> okay, so what I was trying to spit out, now when you were there, the dolls weren't, is that correct? Correct, okay. correct. And this okay. was back in 2005. Right, so there. this is a relatively new occurrence. Which, yeah, last yeah. October. So we'll have to keep our eyes open, or our ears open, our Facebook pages yeah. open, and see if we hear anything else, if they show up again. Yeah, that's so true. We'll see that's what happens. True. We'll keep you guys yeah. informed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what time it is? What time is it? As the paranormal world turns, <laughs> we are going to be talking about <laughs> this is a story that from mm. the Huff Post. Weird news. You can always count on them to, re to bring I, us I'm something. I'm going to have to try really hard to keep a straight face around the story. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm All ready. Right. I'm ready. Uh, okay. A self-described ghostbuster, Huang Zhenjuan, wants to perform an exorcism with his uh, uh, genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote that? <laughs> so who are you going to call? Uh, not, not this, this guy. guy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> apparently Huang Jinjun was arrested this month in China's Guangdong province for allegedly convincing a woman that his genitalia could get rid of evil spirits in her genitalia. Okay, the victim allegedly, I can hear them laughing in the control room. <laughs> the victim allegedly came to the Ghostbuster because she needed help seducing her boss. Now, Ghostbusters don't do that to begin with, all right? People, people. <laughs> That's when Jen Juin al allegedly pitched the exorcism idea. According to the Southern Metropolis Daily translation by Global Times, Huang then convinced the victim to have sexual relations after explaining that ghosts in her genitalia are preventing her boss from falling in love with her. Ghosts he could only catch with his <laughs> genitalia. <laughs> in his defense, Jin Juin allegedly told authorities he couldn't have had sex with the victim because diabetes prevents him from achieving uh, well, let's just say he was Viagra challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out he wouldn't have been able to help with the ghost problem mm. after all. The story has also caused Jen Juin's girlfriend to break up with so-called buster of ghosts <laughs> via an angry letter announcing the severing of her romantic ties with Jen Juin, stating, Wong, you have crossed the line, you sick f <laughs> Ooh, I might have to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that's the only that she only cut off the relationship. I probably would have cut off more. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I, 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 you know, I read that and I'm going. I'm going I, 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 I just, I had no words. Uh, you know me. I never without a loss of words. I, mm. I had no words. I, I thought this is definitely as the paranormal turns. I, I mean, you know, right. turns my stomach. I mean, I just. This, you know, this is so out there. <laughs> I mean, part of me wants to go and slap this guy and be like, we, knock it off, you jerk. But the other part of me wants to go to this woman and say, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> Ooh, we're going to have to bleep that, too. <laughs> but, I mean, he's been arrested. So I don't know, I don't know what happened in court. Uh, right. But uh, I don't know whether he took money from her to do this genitalia mm. thing. I, I, I just really don't know. I, he, he must be one smooth talker to convince a woman. I mean, he's to not have, that cute. I, I mean, know, you saw but, the picture. He's not really that cute. But to convince a woman that her that her genitalia is haunted. She must wanted her boss something fierce. She must have really wanted. I wonder if her boss knows. <laughs> There's a ghost in your genitalia. Right. I gotta get rid of it. <laughs> is that kind of like dusting off the cobwebs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God! Okay, I think okay, we, we gotta do. stop before we, we can go yeah. on forever. Yeah, here. let's just let's okay. just go you on know, here. I, I got another story. I okay. hope we have time. I got oh another yeah, story. we have time. We have time. Okay, um, that That's came in my last arm night, and uh, it, it's along not along the same lines, but it's definitely as the paranormal turn. Same topic. Okay, <laughs> and I know some people are into this, and and and, I'm, and I respect their 
their their journey. Right. <laughs> I don't, but uh, you know. Anyway, I, I got an email a couple weeks ago. I think it was a couple, maybe a week ago, and it was from the a casting company, mm -hmm. and they were looking for paranormal investigators for a new show. Wait um, for it. Wait for it. That they will be taking investigating to the next level, <laughs> called the Real Naked Investigators. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this one had me laughing. Uh, <laughs> they're putting a different spin on investigating and are looking for people and teams to be interested in taking it to the next level in the nude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I know one of our friends right. has done that. And yes, he's actually, because I did forward the email onto him, but I, I, he's actually filmed an episode. And who knows? It might be, it might be very good. You, you know, know, well, and the whole, I think, the idea behind what they're trying to do is that, you know, skin is the biggest organ in our body, and we feel things. You know, think about the hair right. standing up on the back of your neck, getting goosebumps, that kind of thing, when spirits are by. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea behind it is that if you're completely naked, that you're completely open to experience all the sensations around you. There's a draft. <laughs> <laughs> You get goosebumps. Yeah. Okay. Right, they, but yeah, yeah. They yeah. are following the concept because we want to see if people get different readings than they do when they are closed. Closed. If the paranormal world is more eager to communicate when someone is so vulnerable, all private parts will be blurred out and there will be compensation. I certainly All hope right. so. All right. I don't know if I would trust anybody that did it for free. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if we should have said that. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's not about putting a bad light, causing drama, or making fun of the paranormal. This idea was brought to our company after research on paranormal investigation teams in history, doing it in the nude, and we want to see if their reasonings for doing it in the nude really do spirits do get spirits to communicate easier. I, I don't know that that's the case. I, yeah. I, I'm, I would I would highly doubt you doubt that, but. Uh, yeah, I don't think a spirit would be more inclined to talk to a naked person than a clothed person. I mean, laugh maybe, but I don't know right, person. right. Well, it, apparently, if this is a paranormal challenge that anybody out there would like to take up, email you can email me at the show here, and I will give you forward on her email address so you guys can um, can, can do this. Right, it could be a really interesting experiment. I mean, we'll see what comes out of it, but I wouldn't do it. Well, nobody's going to watch <laughs> this naked body investigate you know <laughs> this ain't gonna happen so you know I, I don't know but apparently it hit Facebook last night and um, I had gotten the email like I said a couple weeks ago I think and I sent it on to one one interested person I thought I might be interested and um, he informed me that I guess he's already filmed an episode so right. yeah and I, yeah, I can totally see him doing that oh yeah you yeah. know and and can we say who so Scott, yeah, Scott, yeah, you all and remember see, Scott yeah, from episode two. two. <laughs> and I can, I can totally see him doing it and actually uh, being serious about it. So yes. you know, I mean, it may have its redeeming qualities. Uh, who, who's, who's to say? It just struck me very funny. Yeah, you know? I mean, and it would, it would. You'd have to be a very serious investigator to do this because if they try to do the show and people are laughing or shy, it's just not going to work. It's, no. it's like they're going to have no. to be the most professional, most serious ghost hunters I've ever seen in order for it to be taken yeah, seriously. Yeah, and I will be interested in finding out their findings. If, yeah, me too. If, if people do get more evidence when they're naked rather than being clothed. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's got a good research edge to it or quality to it. Yeah, but well, we'll see what comes of it. Yeah. Yeah, so again, yeah. if you guys are interested, if anybody out there wants to get down to their skivvies, I guess not even skivvies, but get down to your <laughs> birthday suit <laughs> and get on camera, then uh, <laughs> let us know. I'll forward the information on. <laughs> yeah, just let us know. We'll, we'll be glad to forward you the email address and so that uh, if you guys would be interested in doing that. I'm sure there's exhibitions out there that would be more than happy to. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's not porn. <laughs> you know, so. No, it's not. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, so I think we got a couple minutes left here. Um, do we want to talk about some superstitions? Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you know, you guys all know that we like bringing um, just some interesting tidbits of information every now and then. And we got a new one for you today. We have um, 25 common superstitions and their origins. I don't know if we'll get through all of them right now. Um, but there was a couple that I wanted to mention that were really interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so let, let's just start at the top of the list here. Uh, it's bad luck to open an umbrella indoors. 
even though many people believe that this superstition started with the pharaohs in ancient Egypt, which, you know, I didn't know that. I love, I love. <laughs> um, but most histor historians actually trace the belief back to Victorian times um, when poorly designed umbrellas would have been a very legitimate hazard indoors. So apparently, that's why you don't open umbrellas indoors because once upon a time, there I don't know how they could be <laughs> that hazardous, but... Maybe the may poke you in the eye. Right. Or maybe something. the springs were a little too loaded, and you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're poked in the eye. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Who knows? And then again, the Egyptians regarded walking under a ladder yeah. to be bad luck because triangles are sacred, and since a ladder resting against a wall forms a triangle, it was not okay for someone to walk under it. Damn those Egyptians. I know. You know, they're actually the cause of a lot of these They here. are. They <laughs> are. Um, the next one, broken mirrors lead to seven years of bad luck. Um, now, looking into a mirror to predict the future, the Greeks used to do this. Skyring. Skyring. Scrying. 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 Well, <laughs> what is she trying to say? I've never heard that before. Scrying. Sc scrying. S-C-R-Y-I-N-G. It's like crying with an S. <laughs> scrying. See, I can get it. It just takes me a few times. Um, it's, so it's old. These, you know, the, the Greeks were doing this. Um, they called it something totally different, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. <laughs> I'm looking at the word right now thinking, and uh, no. Um, but apparently, if you saw a distorted image in the mirror, it was considered to be like a really bad omen. Mm -hmm. um, and later, the Romans were taught the idea that people have seven-year cycles of good mm -hmm. luck and bad luck, good luck, bad luck. So it was kind of actually a combination of these two beliefs that now th that the broken mirror equals seven years bad luck. So it's actually a combination of Greek and Roman myths that have evolved together over the ages. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the next one is uh, by the Sumerians uh, mm -hmm. and then the Egyptians. You okay. spill, uh, when you spill salt, toss them over your left shoulder to avoid bad luck. Uh, it started around 3,500 BC and has spread to Egyptians, Assyrians, and then later the Greeks. It doesn't say why, though. No, it, yeah, it doesn't. I actually do that. I, I do, do too. that all the time. Yeah. I don't. I don't, I don't have do a so lot of superstition. Absent-mindedly, you just right. pull, you just knock it over. You just, just yeah, pick some up and just. And then so I've always heard the left shoulder. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you can't do the right. No. I guess no, we'll have to dig in that one a little bit more. Maybe it's the hearts on that. Oh, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one: knock on wood to prevent disappointment. Okay. So this one, it's a very common superstition, but his, historians are actually unsure of where it started, oh. but they believe that it could come from the habit of touching a wooden crucifix when, um, when, while taking an oath. But now I've heard something totally different. I've heard that it has pagan roots, and you would knock on wood because wood is a living thing, and yeah. every living thing has a deva, a, and a deva is just like a spirit. It's another word for spirit. The so, force. The force. The force is with is with us, so, wood. right? <laughs> so you would knock on wood, and it was a way to call up the devas and saying, um, you know, I'm just joking, ha, 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 <laughs> you know, make sure you get what I'm really saying. But anyway, so that's a few of them. Maybe we'll share some more next time. I yeah. think we're running out of time. The clock's getting well, pretty low. I think we have an extra three minutes, don't we? We had an extra three minutes? Yeah, we should have a few more. We should have an extra three minutes, I think, on the, on the clock. Okay. Well, five we, minutes. We've got five minutes left. Okay. Oh, we'll do, let's do a few more, then we'll do announcements. Because yeah. there was one more I wanted to talk about, actually. Okay, go ahead. Um, the next one, about hanging a horseshoe on your door. Oh. With the open it up for good luck. Um, so during the Middle oh. Ages, people thought that witches that. feared horses and that they would stay away from the house if there was a sign of the horses. So you had the horseshoe up. I did not know that. Now, here's something else, though is that um, I was actually given a horseshoe when I was married. Yeah? Yeah, because it's, uh, it's considered good luck. To, the same, same idea, it's considered good luck to put okay, the horseshoe. Okay, I knew that it was good luck. With the U facing up. up right. And what, it re what I was told that it represented was that it would bring good luck in and keep it house. in. Yeah, that's what house. I was always heard, too. But my horseshoe was stolen in the airport. <gasps> Somebody needed more better luck than Apparently, you did. Apparently, <laughs> I, I, I had I was visiting my father who lives in the Midwest, and he was the one who gave it to me. It was just shortly after I was married. He gave me and my husband the horseshoe, 
and I packed it in my suitcase, and when we got home, it was gone. Maybe they, uh, well, that, they didn't have airport security back then. Maybe mm -mm. it set off some kind of alarm or but something. But it's a horseshoe. Well, it's iron. It was iron. Yeah, but so. it's a horseshoe. And it wasn't like on my carry-on. It was my checked luggage. I'd have put it in my carry-on. Yeah, well, I should have. Yeah. Well, it might not be a bad thing. My parents were divorced after all, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing I didn't uh, bring that through because it was the horseshoe that he had gotten from his dad. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay. Again, another one from the Egyptians. Uh, a black cat crossing your path is supposedly unlucky. Um, but Egyptian, Egyptians considered black cats good luck. Right. But when King Charles I mourned the loss of his cat, he decided that his luck was gone. Now people all over the world believe the side of the black cat is bad. Well, I think we had to go back to believing that it's good luck. I because, agree. I love yeah, cats. Just because King Charles the first his cat died, he considered his luck was all gone. Yeah, that's, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Okay. So whatever. <laughs> um, one more. How about the lucky number thirteen? Okay. Okay. So also known as I'm not going to say that word either. What? <laughs> Tristan, oh, tell me. Huh? Oh, well, I'm sorry, where no. are you? Tris Triskaidekaphobia? Triskaidekaphobia. The knuck <laughs> that's, hey, that's good. Oh, that's really okay. good. That is the fear of the number 13. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. So this fear originates back to Norse mythology, um, where there were 12 gods said to be having dinner when Loki, who mm -hmm. is the god of strife and evil, he's like the, the trickster god. Um, so basically, Loki like totally crashed this dinner party and ultimately caused the death of another god named Baldur. I didn't know that. So Loki was the 13th one at the party, and he, everything went to... Went to... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say, yeah. too, but I caught myself. Okay. Yeah, everything right. went downhill from there, so yeah. that's why 13 well, is This has been an episode of swear words I today. know, I know. Okay. All right, I think now we, let's get to our um, announcements. Yeah, let's we'll do wrap the announcements. This up. We've got just a few announcements. Yeah. Before we wrap up, so we're getting close, just a little over two weeks away from Paranormal Journeys. We will be on location. I'm so excited yeah. about this at the Porterville Ghost Society event on March 14th with the Ghost Hunters International Boys. So Barry Fitzgerald, Joe Chin, Paul Bradford, they're all going to be there. This yeah. is really exciting, guys. And it all takes place at Allensworth um, in early March. Yes. So this is, um, it's really mm -hmm. close by. It's, it's local, but it is limited to only 75 people. And get your tickets now because... As the last I looked a couple days ago, uh, 50 of them are already gone right. from what I understand. So. And by the, time this mm. by the time you guys actually see this, that number is going to be even smaller. Yeah. So get your tickets. Um, yeah. It's going to start at 1 p.m. with tours during the day and night, investigations of five buildings in the park. Yes. So this is big. Um, yes. There will be some food vendors and camping facilities, um, and you're not going to want to miss this GHI reunion event. So mark your calendars. Okay, um, one more, April 2015, the fifth annual Virginia City Paracon mm -hmm. is being held the 17th through the 19th. Um, this is the investigation, we've talked about it before, at the Washoe Millionaires Club, the Fourth Ward School, and the McKay Mansion. So go to scarequest.com for more information on those. Yeah, and that about wraps it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to see what CCPI is up to, go ahead and check their website at www.ccpifresno.org. Yep, and if you want to see what I've been up to, go to castelcurandero.com. Um, we have some big changes coming up in the next mm -hmm. few months, so be on the lookout. Um, but that's it for today, guys. We will see you back for our next show when we talk about more paranormal topics on the last Wednesday of each month on the same channel, same time. We hope that you've enjoyed our show, and if you have any questions or comments, contact us at paranormaljourneys1 at gmail.com. Um, and if you'd like what you've seen so far, go to our Facebook page to see what's coming up next. You can also watch past episodes, and don't forget to like our page, and that's going to be facebook.com at paranormaljourneys. Yes. And uh, that's it's it. Like our new, our new, uh, our new logo yeah. right behind us here. Yeah. You know? Oh, I guess it's over. Oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a new, our, our new uh, I don't know, Paranormal Journeys uh, promo. Yeah. Yes, whatever. Excite, so. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Changes everywhere. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you again so much. Take care. And be safe.